Greetings. My name is Dr. Laura Christensen. I'm an assistant professor and extension specialist in the Department of Crop Sciences here at the University of Illinois. Today we'll be talking about conservation drainage, like a handshake in the field. Drainage over the past few decades has intensified due to economics. First of all, it's relatively inexpensive to install our drain pipes more intensively. Secondly, producers know there will be a positive return on investment by increasing the drainage intensity. We have anecdotal evidence that producers are choosing to drain more intensively, for example, with things like this survey on Twitter. The majority over a thousand, of a, over a thousand respondents indicated that 25 to 50 foot spacing is what they would choose. We see some comments like, Closer is better if you're doing the tiling yourself, and mentions of splitting the centers, which essentially means doubling the drainage intensity. There's an overriding desire to reduce any risk associated with excess water in our fields. And when we think of the future and inc increased climate variability, these risks and the associated desire to reduce the risk is not going away. We have a long history of improving the land drainage in our part of the country. And there's an old quote, tile drainage costs, whether you pay for it or not. That was appropriate in the olden days and is still a quote that resonates today. Draining more intensively is the current trend to reduce risk and it doesn't always follow the recommended guidance and principles, for example, in our very own Illinois Drainage Guide. And you should know that draining very intensively doesn't always follow the golden rule of drainage. Did you know there's a golden rule of drainage? Well, it is, there is, and it says, drain what is necessary for good crop growth and good trafficability, and not a drop more. As long as you're meeting those agronomic production goals of crop growth and being able to get into your field, you really don't need to send any extra water downstream. So there's a term that I would like to introduce the term conservation drainage. This concept involves using our drainage systems for their intended purpose of improving crop production while also using the drainage system itself to minimize downstream impacts in terms of the amount of nutrients that we're sending downstream. Conservation drainage practices reduce nitrate loads by either modifying the drainage system design, modifying how we operate the drainage system, or by cleaning nutrients out of the water at the edge of the field before that drainage water goes downstream. I think you can see that this concept of conservation drainage directly aligns with our golden rule of drainage. And I like to think of the concept of conservation drainage like a handshake, where one hand is agronomic production and the other hand is good environmental quality, or in other words, being a good upstream neighbor. Conservation drainage practices generally include practices like the practice of controlled drainage, the practice of drainage water recycling, saturated buffers, and one of my favorites, wood chip bioreactors. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.